ಜಕ್ಷುರ್ಮಿಲಿತೀಗುರುಮಹಾಶ್ರೀಗುರುಮಹಾಂಶ್ರೀಗುರುಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ್ಚರಗುನಾಥ ಸವಿಜೀವಂ ಸಾಧೂತ ಪರಿಜನ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಚೈತನ್ಯದೇವೀರಾಧಾಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪದಾನ್ ಸಹ ಗಣಲಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ವಿಶಾಖವಿಖಂ ಕರೋತಿ ವಾಚಾಲ ಪಂಗು ಲಂಘಯತೆ ಗಿರಿ ಯತ್ಪಾತಮಹಂ ಬಂದೆ ಶ್ರೀಗುರುದೀನ ಕಾರಣ ಪರಮಾನಂದ ಮಾಧವ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯ ಈಶ್ವರ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾಲಯ ಕೃಷ್ಣಪೇಷ್ಠಾ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಇತಿ ನಾಮಿನಿ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ದೇವಿ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಣಿ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ಕಾರಣಿ ಹೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಕರುಣಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನ ಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತಿ ಗೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಕಾ ಕಾಂತ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧಾ ಕಾಂತ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತ ಕಾಂಚನ ಗೌರಂಗಿ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧೆ ವೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ವೃಷಭಾನುಸುತೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಾಮಿ ಹರಿಪ್ರಿಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೋ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧರ್ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಾದಿ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಎವ್ರಿಬಡಿ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಟುಡೇ ಐ ಎಂ ಐ ಎಂ ಫೀಲಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪ್ರಾಂಟ್ ಫಾರ್ ಪ್ರೇಮ ಪ್ರೇಮ್ ಪ್ರಕಾಶ್ ಹರಿದಾಸ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಟುಡೇ ಹಿ ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟೆಡ್ ಮೀ ಟು ಟೇಕ್ ದ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಬಿಕಾಸ್ ಹಿ ಇಸ್ ಟೈಡ್ ಅಪ್ ಟಿಲ್ ನೈನ್ ಓ ಕ್ಲಾಕ್ so he'll continue from where he left last week uh, so today we'll just uh, i thought we'll just brush up with the leelamrita part uh, which i wanted to to last so whatever we have learned with leelamrita we can just take a question answer session so that uh, uh, we we are we are up to date with the, what we what we have learned so i'll just share the screen uh, in the meantime i hope everybody started filling their respective forms you know i hope uh, you have no no problem in filling the forms right hare krishna prabhu ji hare krishna prabhu ji before i attend the class today uh, i just wanted to say thank you to all the you know devotees who have uh, you know taken this initiation class because i finished my filling my form it was sent uh, also to the office and uh, my interview initiation interview is also over prabhu ji oh. i just say a big thank you to you know all of you because uh, without your help i wouldn't have been able to you know do any of it so how was the interview it was uh, because i'm very new prabhu ji i was asked a lot of questions but it was easy you know thanks to krishna's grace and attending you know sessions and uh, also mangalarti with uh, sri sri radha govinda temple kulai it helped me a lot to learn and you know understand the type of questions the main thing is prabhu ji you have to remain calm if you can remain calm and you know krishna will take care of the rest so when they ask you the questions you know you don't need to be scared you need to be you know uh, feel, like confident that yeah uh, you know krishna is going to be with you always so i'm going to vrindavan tomorrow uh very well hopefully you know uh, guru maharaj also joins us in the safari very soon and uh, we are all praying so uh, i i just wanted to say this before you know i attended today's class also for me oh very good correct right are are go so uh, you are going to vrindavan for the initiation uh, it was supposed to happen on the 10th prabhu ji fingers crossed you know guru maharaj is okay and uh, he can attend but in any case it's vrindavan prabhu ji uh, you know with time everything will happen and fall into place so i'm just happy i'm getting this chance and opportunity to go to vrindavan dam also yeah so can you see my screen yes prabhu ji yeah okay so we'll just go through some go through some basic question answer i just see some on the chat some people have said they are not yet started i suggest that you start because it will take some time to fill the forms because it, there is some things are uh, 
elaborate and expect uh, they demand a lot of time. So I think you, I suggest that you take up uh, getting the form right away because it takes some time. Some portions are very simple, but the essay part and writing about Guru Maharaj and all it takes some time. So you should, you should start writing it now. Yeah. So we'll go with the first. Uh, you can. I I I urge all of you to just answer it. Answer. Open your uh, mics and start, answer the questions. It will help you uh, when you when you uh, when you answer your questions in initiation uh, interview as well. So the first question is: uh, Srila Prabhupada's is appearance day. What is the day? First day? September 1996. Uh, 1896. 1896. Correct. And at which place? At Tolliganj, Calcutta. Tolliganj, Calcutta. That's good. So that is the answer here. 1st September 1896 in Taliganj, Kolkata. Next uh, day, uh, in reference to Janmashtami, uh, which day it was? Nandot Chav. Yeah, no, it's, it was uh, Nandot Chav. And uh, that is why we celebrate uh, Prabhupada's uh, Yas Puja on the next day of Janmashtami every year. So all over the world it is celebrated the next day of Janmashtami. And he was born on Nandu Sabe, and because of which his uncle started calling him Nandula. Uh, what, what, what were his parents' name? Hare Krishna, what were his parents' names? Gaur Mohande and, and uh, Ajni. Yeah, his, uh, Gaur Mohan Dev was his father's name and Rajani Dev was his mother's name. Okay. Uh, what did, what did, uh, what name did his parents give him? Abhay Prasad. Abhay Charan. Abhay Charan Dev. And how many brothers and sisters did he have? What were their names? Sisters and one brother. Two sisters and one brother, right. And what, 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 what were their names? Krishna Mohande. That is brother, okay. And his sisters? Yeah, they were Rajeshwari Day and uh, Bhavatarini Day, okay. So you should know yes. this. So his sister, sister's names were um, Rajeshwari Dev and uh, Bhavatarini Dev. And what did the astrologer predict when he was young? When he was very young, when the astrologer predicted something Hare about Krishna, him? The astrologer predicted that one day your... Yeah, please go ahead. Krishna Prabhuji, Hare the Krishna. astrologer predicted that your son will one day cross the ocean when he will be six, 79. Correct. So there's a, there's a prediction that when the child reaches the age of 70, he would uh, cross the ocean uh, and become a great exponent of uh, religion and open 108 temples. So that's what the astrologer predicted. So... And what were his parents' goal for uh, little Abhay? What, what were his goals? His parents had some goals for him. So what were they? Mother wanted him to become a lawyer, British uh, advocate. advocate. And his father? And his father wanted him to become a devotee of Radha Krishna, mm -hmm. become a nice Vaishnava. Mm -hmm. Yeah, correct. So, uh, Gaur Mohande's father uh, had three Vaishnava goals for uh, his child Abhay. The first one was to become a uh, servant of Radha Rani. The second was to become a preacher of uh, Bhagavatam. And the third was to uh, learn the devotional art of playing the Mridanga. That was the three uh, Vaishnava devotees his father had for him. Uh, his, uh, as you said, uh, uh, his mother had his, wanted him to become a British lawyer. Next question is, uh, what were Abhay's, Abhay's devotional journey uh, when he was very young? Some, there are some small devotional services uh, services he, he uh, exhibited when he was very young. 
So what was what were they? He was pulling Ratha Jatra from the cart. Correct. Right, right. Car festival. Car festival. Yes. And so when he was very young, he was going to nearby temple. Correct, correct. So that's the first one, right? So when he was very young, uh, his devotion journey started and he was accompanying his father, mother uh, or a servant uh, and he used to daily visit the uh, Radha, Radha going the temple across the street, which was 150 years old. It was very close to his house. So he used to visit that regularly. And as you correctly said, uh, he also did, uh, he imitated his elders in uh, doing the Rathi Yadra. Uh, Prabhuji asked for his father to give him uh, that uh, some small deities uh, and his father provided that and uh, then he used to do regularly, uh, you know, deity, uh, he used to dress them up and he used to do puja for correct. the deities also. Correct. So... So the next question is, how did he imitate the elders when they were performing devotion services? So the same on that answer is already given. Uh, from very young age, uh, Abhay ate only Prasadam offered to Radha and Krishna and imitating his father and the priests of Radha Govind the temple, he would offer his deities a ghee lamp and put them to rest at night. Abhay wanted to have his own cart and perform his own Rathayatra. So his father, Gaur Mohande, purchased an old cart, restored it, decorated and painted it, copying the origins at, which is done at Puri. So next question, when did he lose his mother? At what age did he lose his mother? 16 years. At the age of 16. 16. At the age of 16, uh, his mother passed away. And... Uh, he, he, along with his sisters, uh, felt uh, his mother's loss a great deal because she was feeding and grooming him. She was doing her duties uh, as a mother and uh, she was instructing him uh, in, on many things and uh, there was nothing that uh, that was there and he could, he could always feel uh, his mother's uh, loss. So when Abe, the answer is here, the, when, when Abe was 16, his mother passed away. His mother, uh, he misses mother's affectionate care, her prayers and mantras for his protection, her feeding and grooming him, her dutiful scolding him. He, her passing affected his sister even more. Uh, but his father, you know, his father was a uh, Vaishnava, so he instructed him uh, that there's nothing to lament because the soul is eternal and everything happens by the will of Krishna. He should have faith and depend upon Krishna. That's what his father told him when his mother died. Um, at, when did uh, Abe begin college? Abe began college in 1916. So he visited uh, the Scottish Churches uh, College, which is a Christian school, uh, which is very well reputed amongst the Bengalis and many, many Vaishnava families. So this is what he must do. Yeah, why did Gaur Mohan then decide not to send Abe to London for further studies? Why did he decide not to send him? Because he thought he will forget the etiquettes and mannerisms of uh, our country and he will become like them. Right. So, uh, Gaur Mohan there right. long ago decided that he would not allow Abhay to go abroad or London in the name of education because he didn't want him to get exposed to the corruption of the West. He didn't want to get his son exposed to the corruption, corruption of the West. He wanted Abhay to be a pure devotee of Sri, Srimati Radha and Krishna. So that's what uh, is it, this written here. Gormon, they had long ago decided that he would not allow Abhay to go to London in the name of education and become exposed to the corruption of the West. He always wanted Abhay to be a pure devotee of Srimati Radha Rani and Lord Krishna. What was uh, uh, Sri Prabhupada's wife's name? Srimati Radha or Radha Rani. Radha. Radha. Yeah, her name was Radha Rani Dutta. Her complete name before marriage was Radha Rani Dutta. Uh, when, did, when did he meet his spiritual master Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj? Which year? 1922. Correct. 1922 he met. Uh, he met along with his friend Narendranath Molik. So, 
have met Sri Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Maharaj Thakur at the insistence of his friend Narendra Nath Muli in the year 1922. And yeah, so that, that place is called Ulta Danga. That place is called Ulta Danga. So you must remember that place. I just missed out writing here. Please remember the name is, uh, the place is called Ulta Danga. And uh, next question is, uh, what was the first instruction that his spiritual master gave him on, on his first meeting? When he met him the first time in 1922 at Ulta Danga, what was the first instruction that his uh, spiritual master gave him? That he is an educated person and he can he can spread Krishna consciousness or he can spread the uh, this uh, using his uh, I mean he is an educated person and he can spread uh, Krishna consciousness. Correct. So as this as the two Vaishnavas that is a. Uh, Abhay Charande and his friend Narendra Nath were just rising away after paying obeisance to the spiritual master. He immediately said to him, you are educated young man, why don't you preach Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's message throughout the whole world? Uh, so that's what he told him. And uh, Abhay being young, he couldn't believe what he had just heard because they had hardly met and they have not even exchanged any waves. He was one hour by the sadhu's strength of conviction. This conviction sadhu had about, that is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur had about these two young, you know, young boys. Uh, even though without meeting them before, he gave them this instruction. So he was very convinced by the sadhu's strength of conviction. So why was Bhakti Siddhanta, why was Sri Prabhupada keen on doing business? He, was express, he expressed his desire to do business. Now, why was it so? There was a specific reason for that. So that he could uh, make enough money to print books. Yeah. So uh, Abhay thought that if he had to become very successful in business, he could not only support his family, but he could also support Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's mission of spreading spreading Krishna consciousness. So that is why he wanted to business do business and be successful. So it's written here. Abhay thought that if they, if he were to become very successful in business. He could not only support his family, but also to help uh, support Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati's Thakur's mission of spreading Krishna consciousness. Uh, how, how is his wife described in the book? What is mentioned about his wife? She was a devotee of uh, Lord Krishna. Yeah, so... Prabhuji, she, she was a devotee, but she did not suffer throughout his life. Uh, throughout her life uh, for the mission of her husband. Yeah, so, she was... correct, correct. Her, her name is uh, Radharani and she was a chaste woman and faithful wife, but she was not inclined to share her husband's spiritual interest. That's what is mentioned about the book, uh, in the book about her. And when did his father pass away? In which year? Now his father passed away in 1930. In 1930, his father passed away. When did uh, Bhakti Siddhanta uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur uh, departure depart from this uh, planet? Which year? 1936, 31st December. 1937. 36, 31st December. Uh -huh. He was not part of the question, just wanted to ask. Yeah. Uh, when did uh, Srila Prabhupada get initiated? Which year? 1936. No. 1933. No, no, no. Uh, he got initiated, he got initiated at the Allahabad Gaudiya Math uh, in uh, 1930, November 21. November 21, 1930. So he, he realized that uh, he got the information that uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur is coming to the Allahabad Gaudiya Math on November 21, 1930. So uh, he expressed his desire to become to get initiated uh, from Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Uh, but when he was introduced to Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he showed uh, that he knew him. He said, yes, uh, 
I, he likes to hear. He does not go away. I have marked him. I will accept him as my disciple. That's what he told me. Uh, what did his spiritual master name him of initiation? Uh, upon initiation, they changed the name. So what uh, name did uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur give to Srila Prabhupada? Abhaya no, no, no. There was continuation of the name, but his name was, uh, he confirmed the name Bhakti Siddhanta. He, he gave the name Bhakti Siddhanta. However, one of his senior disciples, that is Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's uh, senior disciple, Sridhara Maharaj, he thought it, it's an inappropriate to have Abhay the same name and same title as a spiritual, spiritual master. So he asked Abhay that his title will be changed to Bhakti Vedanta. So, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Goswami confirmed the name Bhakti Siddhanta. However, Sridhara Ma Maharaja, a senior devotee of uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, thought it inappropriate to give Abhay the same title as the spiritual master. So he asked Abhay's title to be changed to Bhakti Vedanta. When did his spiritual master give him the second instruction of, uh, of printing books? 1936. 1935. In November 1935, they were walking together along the bank of Radha Kun. The first instruction he gave it in Kolkata, Ulta Danga. The second one he gave him in Radha Kun when they were walking together in 1935, November 1935. They walked together alone on the bank of Radha Kunda. Bhakti Siddhanta conveyed the distress over the Quarrel among his leading disciples in Kolkata. Abhay felt his spiritual master speaking to him in urgency as if asking him for help or warning him to avoid a disaster. And then directly so he told him, I had a desire to print some books. If you ever get some money, please, please print books. So he got that in November 1935. I just checked the book. It is saying, uh, it is showing that 1932 is he got his initiation. Uh, not 1930, as I mentioned, it's 1932. 32. 32, yeah, sorry. Uh, who was his first initiated devotee in India? Uh, Prabhupada initiated only one person before he left for America. He initiated one uh, devotee of his. What's his name? Prabhakar Mishra. Sorry? Prabhakar Mishra Prabhupada. Correct, correct. correct, correct. So he appointed Prabhakar Mishra, who was a lecturer in medical officer at Jhansi, as the secretary of his league in Jhansi. And after several months, he initiated him. First, Prabhakar became Abhay's first disciple and gave him the and, and Prabhupada gave him the name as Acharya Prabhakar. Prabhakar, however, is not a completely surrendered person, surrendered disciple. Hence, he remained independent. He was not fully into the into the into the. the Congregation. Next question is uh, why? What made him uh, uh, shelve the league uh, of devotees? He started league of devotees, which was similar to Iskon before he left for America. What made him uh, shelve that? So actually, the, uh, the League of Devotees was started in a place called Bharti Bhavan, which was a gift, deed of gift from uh, one of his uh, friend named Reva Shankar Bhayal. He was the owner of that uh, place, Bharati Bhavan, uh, and the, uh, he, he called that league, league uh, as League of Devotees. Yeah, he could not continue because he could not arrange 5,000 rupees for the outright, outright purchase of Bharati Bhavan. He could not arrange for the purchase. And at the same time, the Mahila Samiti Sangha pressurized Bhayal, the owner, to persuade Abhay Charan to relinquish his claim on Bharti Bhavan. Events and opinions were turning against him to conduct a mission in Chansi, which seemed no longer auspicious. He decided to leave. He told his friends to carry on the League of Devotees in his absence. So that is why he had to leave. Because he could not arrange the 5,000 rupees to pay for the outright purchase of uh, 
പാർട്ടി ഭവൻ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ വാട്ട് പ്രോംപ്റ്റഡ് പ്രഭുപാദർ ടു ലീവ് ഹിസ് ഫാമിലി ആൻഡ് ലീവ് അലോൺ ഹിയർ ടു ഡെസേർട്ട് ഹിസ് ഫാമിലി ആൻഡ് ലീവ് അലോൺ വാട്ട് പ്രോംപ്റ്റഡ് ഇൻ പ്രഭുപാദർ ടു ഡൂ ദാറ്റ് his wife was not very supportive she had sold his books and writings for tea and correct correct so his wife couldn't help him in spreading krishna consciousness once she traded his uh, worshipable bhagavatam for tea and biscuits uh, that was the clincher this made abhay leave his family his family life was finished so that's what uh, that's what is the reason given here his wife couldn't help him in spreading krishna consciousness once she traded his uh, worshipable bhagavatam for tea and biscuits this made abhay leave his family his family life was finished and also uh, later on he had one dream uh, uh, bhakti siddhanta saraswati appeared to tell him to take sanyasa so that also was a one decision why he de- decided to make take up complete sanyasa when did he formally take sanyasa he took, he, he was formally initiated uh, by his god brother which date it was anybody you should know this date because this is a little important because it's about his sanyasa the september 17 1959 in september 17 17 september 17 1959 he was initiated by keshav maharaj so september 17 1959 keshav maharaj presided over the sanyasa ceremony keshav maharaj said that abai would now be known as bhakti vedanta swami maharaj so he was only named bhakti vedanta now will be known as bhakti vedanta swami maharaj and he took up sanyasa on 17 september 1959 why did he meet sumati maharaji for the first time anybody why did he meet sumati maharaji who was who was sumati maharaji the first first tell me who was sumati maharaji owner of a streamliner the yeah, owner of uh, maraji streamliner. streamliner yeah and yeah. why did he meet uh, maraji simati Mar- sumati maraji for the first time he met her twice he he wanted to travel to, 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 to go to Japan. Japan. that was second time that was second time he met first time he met for some other reason second time he met her for traveling to america that's correct for publishing the books to correct yeah correct he yes. wanted donations for uh, publishing the book correct publishing yeah so he had, he had heard from his god god brothers that uh, uh, sumati maharaji the owner of sindhya steamship uh, she was uh, well known for helping sadhus and uh, donating to the sadhus so he had never never met her before uh, so in 1958 he he uh, he went to meet her to ask her for donation for printing shrimad bhagavatam so he had decided to meet uh, maraji he had not met her before but he met her because he wanted to help for printing shrimad bhagavatam okay so who was the person in india who helped him arrange for the sponsorship visa to america what's his person's name anybody who was the person uh, who helped him uh, get the visa by he told his son who was in uh, who was abroad to arrange for a sponsorship visa so what is this person's name gopal something gopal. that's his son's gopal name gopal agarwal father yeah mr gopal agarwal mr agarwal gopal agarwal is his son's name you are right but the person in india who helped him was mr agarwal so he asked his son uh, gopal agarwal who was in pennsylvania usa to arrange for a uh, sponsorship visa for uh, swami ji okay that's what uh, is written so agarwal mr agarwal his son uh, uh agarwal gopar agarwal from pennsylvania pennsylvania who was asked to help him for with his sponsorship visa yeah so when did he get the information from minister of external affairs regarding his sponsorship in which year the same year that he traveled to us which year was which which year did he travel to us it in march 1965 in march 1965 he got a message from uh, after returning from uh, meeting uh, and to sell his books in uh, bombay he came back to uh, vindavan and there he was told uh, uh, by the minister of external affairs that there is a document uh, from uh, usa 
and some one person by name Gopal Agarwal has sponsored his uh, visa to go abroad. So that was in March 1965, March. Why did he meet Sumati Maharaj the second time? You answered that question. So we'll, we'll just uh, skip that. To ask her, ask her help for free passage on her on one of her ships to go to America. So that what that's what you answer. He met her for the second time for that. Why was uh, Sumati Maharaj initially reluctant to send Srila Prabhupada to America? Uh, what was her reasoning for not uh, sending her to, um, to America, sending him to America? Due to his because age, Prabhupada is very, very old and uh, ailing. So she felt that Swamiji was not healthy. Uh, it was too cold in America and he may not be able to come back. And she also doubted that whether he would be able to accomplish his uh, mission there because she thought that the American people were not cooperative and they would probably not listen to him. So she also told him that you are very old. You are, uh, why are you taking this responsibility? Do you think it is very right? And uh, she, she said that her staff felt that she... Prabhupada may die there once he, if he goes there. That's what uh, she said. That's why she was written to uh, send him to America by, in, one, in one of her ships. Which is what is written here. She felt that Swamiji was not healthy. It would be too cold there. He may not be able to come back. And she doubted whether he would be able to accomplish, accomplish much there. People in America were um, not cooperative and uh, they would not probably listen to him. And she said, Swamiji... Uh, You are so old, you are taking the responsibility. Do you think it is all right? Swamiji, she said, you are going to die there. So, uh, after she relented, uh, and she agreed to give him the passage, her secretary, Mr. Choksi, arranged, uh, went to the market with uh, Sri Prabhupada and arranged, he arranged for uh, some woolen clothes to beat the winter in America, the severe winter in America. That's what uh, was written in the book. Uh, what did he do after his visa and P form formalities were completed in Bombay? So, what did he do for, uh, two weeks before that? What did what did he do uh, once he got his uh, visa and P form formalities done in uh, Bombay? He went to his sister's place three days before. Yeah, he came back to Calcutta. Uh, he did not go to his home because he had no place to stay because he is separated from his family. So. Uh, he decided to move in with one Mr. Shishir Bhattacharya, who was a Kirtan singer and he knew him only once. Shishir Bhattacharya's house he stayed. And then he traveled to Mayapur and visited the Samadhi of uh, his spiritual master, uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Uh, that's what he did before, just before uh, leaving for America and uh, after uh, finishing his uh, visa and P-form formalities in Bombay. So he came back to Calcutta. He had no place to stay because he had separated from his family. And so he had taken sannyasa, he can't go back to his family. So he moved and stayed with Sishir Bhattacharya. Then he traveled to Mayapur and visited the Samadhi of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur there. Uh, when did he travel on the ship? Which date he traveled on the ship? It's an important milestone if you know this. Uh, he traveled on August 13, 1965. He traveled on August uh, 13, 1965 at 9 a.m. Uh, uh, and Calcutta, the ship uh, left for Calcutta for America. So, who? what was the name of the ship? What was the name of the ship? Jaladuta. Yeah, right. The ship's name was Jaladuta. <laughs> So it is called MB Jaladuta, it's called motor, ve motor vessel Jaladuta. Uh, what hardships did he face on Jaladuta? There are a couple of uh, hardships that is listed there. Two heart attacks. Yeah, two heart attacks, one of them. Two heart attacks, he was always seasick. Two heart attacks. Seasickness and two heart attacks, correct. So on the, on the second, second day itself of traveling, the 14th, that is for 13th they started, on the 14th itself, he felt severe seasickness. And later he had two heart attacks and more seasickness. That's what uh, uh, on, uh, he had during the journey of toward to uh, New York. So on the second day itself, he felt se severe seasickness. Later he had two heart attacks and more seasickness. 
What dream did he have on board the ship? He had one dream uh, on board the ship. Krishna came as the captain of the ship, Triputi. Sorry, yeah. So on the night of the second day, he had a dream that Krishna, in his many forms, was rowing the boat. And he told Prabhupada that he should not fear, but should come along. Prabhupada felt assured of Lord Krishna's protection and the violent attacks did not occur. That's a, that's what the dream he had. Uh, before. So which was the final port of destination in America? Boston. No, no. Boston was the first port. Uh, New York was the final destination. New York. Boston, yeah, Boston was the first port he visited. Uh, the ship dock, but later on uh, his uh, finest destination was New York. So, 1965, September 19, 1965, uh, his, his ship reached uh, New York, which was the final destination. But before that, the uh, ship touched Boston on September 17, 1965 at 5.30 a.m. after 35, 35 days of travel. So after that, after two days, it reached New York. So that's what is written here. So these dates, you should know, they may ask these dates, which date he reached uh, New York, uh, 19 September, 1965, and Boston, uh, September 17, 1965, he reached. Some of the dates you should know, in New York he reached. So from New York, where was he to travel? He was here to travel from New York uh, to some place. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, correct. So he had to travel to Pennsylvania because uh, he had to meet Gopal Agarwal, his sponsor. Uh, so he had to travel to Pennsylvania by bus to meet and stay at his sponsor uh, Gopal Agarwal's house. That's why he had to travel to Pennsylvania. So how long did he live in Pennsylvania? Roughly how, how long did he live in Pennsylvania? Two months. Probably. No, one month he lived in Pennsylvania. One month he lived in Pennsylvania. Second month he decided to come to New York. Uh, because Agarwal's were not very comfortable with the sannyasis staying at their home. Because people would ask some uncomfortable questions to them. So they put him in a YMCA guest house where he would spend the night and during the day they, he used to come to their house to preach. So that's what he did. And uh, after Pennsylvania, he moved to uh, New York and stayed at Mr. Mishra's home initially. He stayed at Mr. Mishra's home, but he had some differences with him regarding uh, the, the, because he was a Mayavadi, he had some differences on, on the spiritualism. So he had to move to uh, a place called 504 Avenue, which was uh, owned by Mishra. He gave him the place. And later on, he moved to 307. Uh, he moved to 504 and later on, he moved to 307 because he wanted fresh air and light. 504 didn't have it. So, 307, he moved for fresh air and light. Why did he decide to move away from 307? There is a specific reason why he decided to move away from 307. The roommate was a drug addict, Prabhuji. He kept disturbing him and shouting at Prabhupada. So it was, uh, on one night, he uh, went away from that place. I don't know. I'm sorry. That is for that is for 26. I mean, uh, that is for Bauri. That the reason is saying that's your right answer is right, but that is for Bauri. For 307, he decided to move because there was a theft at his place and his belongings, typewriter, and other things were stolen, and he was not feeling comfortable. Uh, the janitor gave him the information and Prabhupada doubted the janitor himself that he would, he had done it and he was not sure whether he will uh, why he will not do it again. So he moved out from 307 because there was a theft there. There was a theft at uh, his place and belongings and typewriter and other things were stolen and he was not feeling comfortable. That is why he moved out from uh, 307. Why did he move? Where did he move from there? He moved to Bavari, as you said. Uh, he moved to Bavari and he shared the loft with one person named David, a youngster, a 21-year-old person named David. He shared the loft with him. And uh, as I told you, why he, what made him desert that Bavari? Because David was a young man, but a drug addict. Once under the influence of drugs, he became uh, aggressive and hence Prabhupada decided to leave the Bavari and stay at uh, uh, his disciple Carl and Eva, they were his dis dis uh, disciples. So he decided to stay at that place. However, Eva was not comfortable with Swamiji staying at their house. So he decided to move out and finally gets to stay at 26 Second Avenue for preaching. And, and above that, he used to stay. For 27, he started preaching. 
And above that place, he, he had a place to stay. So that's what that became is another permanent place where, where he would uh, reside. So at 26 Avenue, the person who was closest to him, who, was, who would cook for Srimad Prabhupada, another disciple was Mr. Keith. He was a youngster who was uh, doing some service for him uh, by cooking and uh, and for, for him as well as for other devotees. Uh, he he did a he did a kirtan in the open place. Which what is the open place today? If you had heard Namanishra uh, Das uh, Prabhu's eight eight a.m. Bhagavatam class, he mentioned about one place where he did uh, open air kirtan. Which place was that? Tomkinson Square Park. Correct, correct, very correct. So that place is called Tomkins Square Park in New York. So Namanishas Prabhu was saying that we should not imitate the Acharyas. We should simply not go and uh, chant at Tomkins Square. That's, this is a place that is uh, that is mentioning today in the Bhagavatam class in the morning. While in New York, when did Swamiji first experience health issues? It was in May 1967. In May 1967, he first uh, uh, had uh, symptoms of heart attack. And then uh, later on, he had even a minor stroke on one side of his body. So he had to be admitted in hospital where he was had prolonged, uh, to say, doctor's uh, treatment. And by the end of June, he returned back to 26th Avenue. He was not fully uh, recovered. However, he expressed his desire to do uh, take up uh, Ayurveda treatment and not take up allopathy treatment. So he decided he was still seriously considering going, going back to India for uh, treatment. So when was the first Ratyatra organized in America? Where was the San Francisco? San Francisco, correct. Very good. At San Francisco. So when did he return to Delhi for Ayurveda treatment? He returned on July 25, 1967. He, along with Keith, returned to India in, on July 25, 1967. When did he visit Vrindavan? He had some health issues in, uh, in uh, he had fever and all those things and uh, in Delhi. And so he stayed back and then uh, on the 1st of August, 1967, after six days after arriving in Delhi, on uh, July 1, he visited Vrindavan. Who was the first person to take sannyasa from uh, sannyasa order from uh, Sri Prabhupada? Keith. Correct. Very good. So Keith, Keith was the person who traveled with him from America and he was the first person to take up uh, uh, sannyasa from him and he was named Kirtanananda. So his name became Kirtananda from Keith. So it's mentioned here on Janmashtami 8, August 28, Sri Prabhupada awarded the order of Sanyasa to Kirtanananda in a ceremony in Radha Damodha temple. So Kirtananda first became he became the first disciple uh, uh, of Prabhupada to take up Sanyasa. Uh, who were the Grihastha couples who helped him establish the Krishna consciousness in, in uh, London among other places. They took up other places also, but no, uh, they are well known for taking up in London. Jamuna Rani and Samasundar. Correct. Jamuna. Very good. It's a difficult question, but uh, the answers are right. There are three married couples, uh, Mukunda, Mukunda and Janaki, Sham Sundar and Malati, and Guru Dasa and Yamuna. They were the three couples who helped uh, Prabhupada spread the Krishna consciousness in uh, London. So, if you hear some of the lectures of uh, devotees, uh, they will always say that uh, even the Brahmachari uh, disciples could not do what these Grihastha disciples did. So these are the three Grihastha disciples which did wonders uh, which even the uh, Bra uh, Brahmachari disciples couldn't do. When was ISKCON uh, formally formed, registered and where? When was ISKCON registered and where? 1966, New York. 1966. Correct. Yes. Very good. Yeah. So it was uh, in, in July 13, 1966, in New York City, 
Swami Prabhupada uh, registered the uh, ISKCON. Now, when did he form the GBC? What is the full form of GBC? This question will be asked because it's part of your uh, governing body commission. Yeah, governing body commission, correct. So, governing body commission, uh, this, this will be taught in detail uh, when you take up the IDC course, uh, which Ashwarya Mataji is planning to take. Okay. So, the GBC was formed in 1970 in Los Angeles. So, it was formed in uh, Los Angeles in July 1970, and he revealed the plan for establishing governing body commission, and uh, uh, he did uh, elaborate plans and wrote uh, all the rules and regulations for how to govern the ISKCON. When did Prabhupada disappear from this planet? Uh, which place? Brundavan. Uh, which year? Which year? 1977. 1977. 1977 14th November. Very good. So on 14 November 1977 at 7.30 p.m. in his room in the Krishna Balrama temple in Vrindavana, uh, Prabhupada departed from this uh, planet. So these are some of the questions I have noted down. Uh, so there, there is one more question. Uh, why was his migration uh, to America significant? You know, that's this is a very important question. I think we can we can only just go through this once. So what happened when after he after he migrated to America? Why was it why is it so significant in his life? Because the worldwide fame of his, his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, later known as Srila Prabhupada, was to come after 1965, only after he went to America. Before that, he tried a lot, but he was not successful. So only after he went to America, he was successful. So before living in a, living India in 1965, he had written three books. But in the next 12 years, he had he has he, has, he wrote more than 60 books. So there's another significant uh, part uh, of his uh, tenure in America. And then next, before he had left India, he had initiated one disciple, that is Prabhakar Mishra, as we discussed. But in the next 12 years, he would initiate more than 4,000. So that's what happened when he moved when he moved to America. Before he had left India, had hardly anyone believed that he could fulfill his vision of a worldwide society of Krishna consciousness. But in the next decade, he would form and maintain the International Society for Krishna Consciousness and open more than 100 centers. This also happened only after he moved to America. So before sailing to America, he had never been out of India. But in the next 12 years, he would travel many times around the world, propagating the Krishna consciousness movement. It is said he, he, uh, circum, uh, he moved around the world 14 times. Although his life's construction, contribution may appear to have come in a late burst of revolutionary spiritual achievements, the first 69 years of his life in India were as preparation for those achievements. That is why he could achieve what he did uh, in America. So these are some of the things uh, that you, you need to know. Uh, what happened specifically uh, when he left India and uh, what was the significance uh, of his American uh, travel. So we are uh, um, um, we are done with this. If you got anybody has got any questions or uh, how to fill the form or about this, uh, we can discuss or uh, we can conclude. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, can Hare we have a question like this about the first canto? First canto question that you want? Yes, can you do that Prabhuji? We can do that, yeah. I, I will note it down. So, question there on first canto, I will... If we have like this, it will be a nice revision. And we'll tell me, please tell me. Like that will help us to, you know, revise the whole canto also. Okay. We'll do that. We'll do that. Hare Krishna Prabhuji. <clears throat> Last time we discussed about that uh, no objection certificate. Uh, so uh, I'm from Sikandrabad. So there are many people who got it from, three, four people said that they got it from the Sikandrabad uh, temple, but when I approach them, they denied it. Uh, according to them, they don't want to give, they are only giving to people who have, were coming in some kind of groups, like different, different areas, they have groups uh, who do something like response, bhajan, kirtan, and uh, namsan kirtan. But I personally don't belong to anything like that. 
we are attached to Mangalore uh, temple and initially we used to go to our local temple. But now what to do, Prabhuji? I, I, will, call you, is... I will call you separately tomorrow and let you know, Mataji. We, we can help you some in some way, okay? Yes, Prabhuji. I'll call you. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, I joined the class late. Uh, will you be sharing this document with the group? Yeah, so we have recorded this uh, uh, this class. You can take it from there. If you want me to share the document? I can share it in the in the WhatsApp group. Um, if possible, Prabhuji. Yeah, along with the answers, I will I will share it. So it will help you read that. But please don't restrict to this. You read the whole book, and just before yes. the uh, before the initiation uh, day or the day of the initiation, you may just go through this, and yes. it will help you. But you uh, you should not be substituted for reading the book because it is not exhaustive. Okay. Yes, Prabhuji. And one more query, Prabhuji. Where is the tentative date? No, no, nothing, Mataji. Not known, Mataji, because uh, presently, unfortunately, Guru Maharaj is in hospital in Delhi. So he's yes, yes, undergoing some treatment. So they are still not yet decided. So we we'll let you know. We'll get enough time yes. to enough time and uh, to, to to and be informed. Okay. So first and foremost, yes, yes. IDC course has to be taken up by uh, Aishwarya Mataji. And then based on that, you will complete your forms. Your forms, you can fill up most of the things. But some of the things on the week and all those things, uh, in the questionnaire, it is there. That answer, if you're done, uh, IDC course is okay. Otherwise, if you're not done, you wait for that and answer those questions. And after that only, the, uh, the date will be fixed. So still, there is some time. Because he's still in the hospital undergoing some treatment. So after that, right. You have to read this yes, book. Prabhuji. This book you have to read without fail. You can see uh, the book. Uh, uh, the name is Prabhupada, right? Correct. Prabhupada. Single book it is. The author of this book, uh, like other author is uh, Sat Swarupa Das. Sat Swarupa Das Goswami is the author of this book. Please read this book. And whatever yes. I am giving you, it is it will only help you just to revise one day before that. Other than that, you have to read the book and make notes. Nothing such yes. that, okay? Yes, Prabhuji. Thank you, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Hare Krishna. Prabhuji, our uh, interview takes place sometime and after that, after some few more days, uh, initiation uh, takes Correct. place, no? Correct. Correct. Interview is first and then Correct. we will have uh, initiation ceremony sort of thing. So when, when, whenever the dates are fixed, uh, they generally take it uh, around 10-15 days before that. That's what uh, the JPS office does. The Jay Prakash, uh, Jay Prakash Swami uh, Guru Maharaj's office in Mayapur, they generally do that. So only 15, to, uh, not more than that. And they don't take months before. They don't take months before. For us also, they took um, approximately 10-15 days before uh, our initiation. So just in, before initiation, they call up and they take any interviews. And then they finalize the day. The date is already finalized. And then they call you for the initiation at the, at the appointed place. There is a question in the chart asking help for uh, how to fill up the initiation form. Uh, Sharon Prabhuji, you were not there during uh, uh, in the, uh, in when the class was taken for initiation form. How to fill the initiation form? Uh, yes, Prabhuji. Actually, that day I missed. Okay. But uh, the, the, the recording is there. Recording, is there. Rec uh, recording also not there. I, I, I forgot to record it also. Yeah. Uh, yes, sorry, Prabhuji. And Prabhuji, I have one doubt. They will not ask any questions regarding Jayapataka Swami to us. Sorry, uh, today, today in the class? Uh, no, in the uh, initiation interview. Yeah, they'll ask. They'll ask. Uh, no, in the, in the questionnaire, it's always already there. So that question. And in the in the, in the interview, they, they, so far, they're not asked anybody about uh, anything about uh, our Guru Maharaj, about him. In the questionnaire, they ask us a few questions that you're supposed to answer correctly. In the interview, they'll not ask you. And so far, as as far as I know, whom I, whom I all have asked, none of them have been, been asked anything about him. Yes, Prabhuji. Okay. Because I was thinking if Keith uh, was the first one who got initiated, uh, who got Sanyas Diksha by Srila Prabhupada, then which number was Jayapataka Swami? That was, I was just wondering. He was, he was one of the one of the 11 people uh, who, who took Sanyasa from uh, Prabhupada. So, uh, number-wise is not mentioned anywhere. I, in the book, at least, is not mentioned. I have gone through the book. It is not mentioned any number-wise. So there are some there are some of them who are senior to him in age also. 
in age also there are some of them who are senior to our guru maharaj also they may have taken they may have taken not sure i can i can confirm that okay prabhu ji you go through you, you go through the form if you got any doubts about how to fill up you can call me up uh, yes prabhu ji we can pick it up we start filling up because it helps it helps yes prabhu ji are Hare Krishna Prabhuji, there are many kirtans. Sometimes Mataji also sings that. So, uh, do we have to prepare one of the bhajans or kirtans in for an interview? Say, like, uh, which bhajan? There are so many Va Vaishnava bhajans are there. Now there is a book. Once Mataji, uh, no, just uh, you are supposed to know all the Mangala artis. Yeah, Mang. You are supposed Mangala to. Mangala artis, okay, okay, done, Prabhuji. But other than that, uh, nothing, no. No, other than that, nothing. You must know. Uh, Tulsi Arti. Tulsi Arti, you should know. Narsima Arti, you should know. Yes. Pranam Mantra. Yeah, Guru Mantra. Pranam Mantra, Bhoga Mantra. Correct. Bhoga, Bhoga Mantra, Mantra, Guru Mantra, all that you should, all that you should know. Sri Guru Charana Pranam, that, that you should know. Sri, Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu, huh. Daya Koro More, that you should know. Along with meanings, you should know. Shishastakam also, Prabhu. Shishastakam, Shishastakam, you should know. And uh, yeah, ten offenses you should know. Yeah, yes. So in two thousand eight, uh, uh, he had a he had he had a stroke. So uh, since then, uh, since then he is uh, he is uh, not well, but yeah, before that he was very active and uh, he was very active and he's, uh, he had very uh, live wire in uh, when doing kirtans and all those things. So he is well known for that. So we see on this, uh, we see on the, on the YouTube, you'll get, uh, you'll get that uh, 